This is Anfisa from Retina Coach and today I will talk about drainage retinotomy and diathermy. Bipolar diathermy is used in intraocular vitro retinal surgeries. In bipolar diathermy, the electrical radio frequencies generated between two electrodes on the instrument itself thus does not pass through the patient's body and does not require the usage of the grounding plate. This helps to minimize electrical interference. Therefore, in contrast to monopolar diathermy, it can be safely used in patients with cardiac pacemakers. Diathermy can be used to mark the retinal break borders, to create drainage retinotomy, coagulate the vessels, and stop bleeding. Another advantage of bipolar diathermy is minimal tissue damage around the area of coagulation. The term retinotomy means cutting the retina. Drainage retinotomy may be helpful in following cases. When the primary retinal break is not absorbed, when primary break does not allow the drainage of most of the subretinal fluid, for example, in long-standing retinal detachment, where subretinal fluid becomes viscose and hardly removed. Also, drainage retinotomy can be used to remove the subretinal fluid from the posterior pole in the case where perfluorocarbon carbon liquid is not available or for some reason plan not to be used. Diathermy is commonly used to perform drainage retinotomy. The benefits of the diathermy are that it makes coagulation, so prevents bleeding and also marks the borders of the retinal break, thus after retinal flattening this area can be easily observed. Drainage retinotomy can also be done by a vitrector. However, in this case, retinotomy will be larger and after retinal flattening, it will be challenging to observe the border of the retinotomy for optimal subretinal fluid drainage. The location of drainage retinotomy should be optimal for removal of the fluid to be as far as possible from the macula and as superior as possible to allow good closure with an end tamponade in the end of the case. After retinal reattachment, the margins of the drainage retinotomy usually treated with endolaser. Now I want to show you one more case where drainage retinotomy was used. This patient had a recurrent retinal detachment a few years after a prior treatment elsewhere with a scleral buckle and suboptimal laser retinopexy around the retinal break followed by buccal extrusion and its removal. In this case, perfluorocarbon carbon liquid was injected to drain the fluid through the pre-existing retinal break anteriorly to the laser scars. However, subretinal fluid was trapped, thus drainage retinotomy with diathermy was performed posteriorly to the scars on the same side of the break. Then fluid air exchange was done for retinal flattening followed by endolaser and endotamponate with a gas. You are welcome to visit our website, subscribe our channel, hit the like button and share our videos. Thank you for your attention.